And welcome everyone to the uh, August meeting of the Central Florida Computer Society. Our guest speaker is someone we've known for many years. Andre Kloss was uh, with Refresh Computers for over 10 years. He uh, used to speak at our January meetings often because he was doing a radio show and was able to kind of get in late enough uh, so we could do the election and he could come by to say even 3.30 and, and uh, be our speaker. But he's now involved with the, uh, a new project that he's actually the founder of. And here's the, uh, the flyer for the Christian Tech Center in Orlando. It's, it's on Route 434. Some of you may remember it's it's at the corner range line in 434 opposite the Wind Dixie Forest. I think you might remember, wasn't it Mike Morgan who had a computer store in the end of the building? That yes, yes. And he wound up having an altercation with the police department and lost his life, unfortunately. He, was, he changed the screen in my son-in-law's laptop. He did a lot of stuff for me as well. So. Anyway, Andre is very deeply involved with the Christian Tech Center, and they will, if, if you're in need, he's great for you because he, they will provide free equipment and service. If, if you are not in need, you can still use his <clears throat> extremely good knowledge of, of what's going on uh, for a contribution. I'm not sure what the scale is on that, but he'll be able to tell us all of that kind of stuff. So, Andre, welcome. Uh, please take over the, uh, I'm going to make you co-host and uh, let you share a screen and all that. So uh, uh, if you're ready to start, please do. Where do I find? Uh, We're not hearing you, Andre. Yes, you have to unmute. So no, he is unmuted, but we're not hearing him. Might be your microphone setting, Andre. Now you're muted, but if unmuted and you're not coming through, it may be in the the uh, sound settings. All right, guys, can you hear me? Got the wrong person spotlighted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. All yeah. right, there we go. Apologies. This Hang laptop on, we, was you uh, used to use this for the Tech Talk just, radio program, and it hold on. to use a specific I, mic before. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, hi there, everyone. My name's Andre Class, and uh, for those who already know me from uh, Refresh Computers, uh, it's good to see you all again. And uh, it's a big transition, a big ch new chapter in my life, as I have since quit Refresh Computers to launch. Christian Tech Center Ministries. Uh, we're out in Longwood at the south side of 434 and Rangeline Road. And uh, so, first of all, I'd like to virtually welcome you to Lake Mary Church, my home church, where um, this whole vision originally began. When I ran for Seminole County Commissioner in the 2020 election, the most important part the best thing that could ever happen to me was finding my relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And it started four years ago when I was trying to get qualifying signatures and I was reached at the campus of Seminole State College. And uh, as I continued to grow in my walk with the Lord and my campaign progressed, I came to realize how much in my life I've been truly blessed with, but at the same time, so many different areas that I've experienced of uh, brokenness and emptiness in my heart that I was trying to fulfill with the things of this world. And in the end, I came to realize that that void can only be fulfilled by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And after I lost in the 2020 election, God put it on my heart to be able to use my gifts and talents to be able to honor him through these talents that I have with technology and being able to fulfill my calling with technology and uh, launch ministry where I can not only be a light in the darkness to glorify God, but be able to serve the biggest underserved need in the 21st century. As, as you know, 
these days, especially since COVID-19, distance learning, work at home, telemedicine, social integration, all heavily rely on having access to modern technology and people without suffer major economic disparities, social inequities, and loss of opportunities to be able to succeed with their everyday lives. And so Christian Tech Center, the vision was formed coming up. It, it basically originates the first Peter 4.10 in the letter from Peter to the early church in Corinth. And uh, so the lot 2021, and I believe I've shared this vision with some of you at last year's meeting um, that uh, I had been undergoing with uh, numerous conferences with several civic leaders, mentors, uh, nonprofit heads in helping me craft this vision. And in February of this year, uh, the Lord told me it was time to take that leap of faith. And so I walked away from my job at Refresh Computers, put all my savings into launching this. And we are now full-fledged 501c3 and Christian Tech Center Ministries was born. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting and grand opening on May 10th. And Mayor Matt Morgan said it was the biggest turnout he has ever seen for a grand opening event with over 100 people in attendance. And in the three months we've been open and fully operational, we have given out over 50 free computers for individuals and families of most need. As we continue to be a light in the darkness, we've worked on numerous computers for people in need. And this is only just the beginning of our mission. So what we do at Christian Tech Center, it's a three-pronged approach. Of course, the first one is addressing people that don't have reliable technology. So people that have computers that aren't working right or aren't working at all, that if there's a family that can't afford to have their computer fixed, they can bring it to me and I just fix it for free. If I can't fix it, I can just give them another machine to get them back up and going. Our second facet is uh, technology training that we're able to offer one-on-one -on -one guide assistance for people in need who might not know how to use a computer. For example, with the sharing center, you can't just go in and get an application for assistance. You have to download the application online. So we can help people with essential tasks, whether it's guide assistance and basic usage or with being able to get connected to resources they might need or reconnect with family or learn how to use their computers. And the, right now we're currently prepping a pilot program with the Rescue Outreach Mission to start doing quarterly Tech 101 training classes. And uh, also in, uh, uh, we're also working on connecting with senior homes, libraries, trying to figure out whether avenues we can uh, potentially have available to us to be able to facilitate more and more workshops. And then the crown jewel of Christian Tech Center is our community redeployment program. And with the community redeployment program, we take equipment, desktop computers, laptop computers from different uh, businesses, individuals, uh, other organizations, and uh, we've even gotten links to commit five laptops for us so that way we can recondition them. We do secure wipe on them, test them to make sure they're a good operating condition, bring them up to modern operating standards with a clean load of Windows 10 or 11, and then we give the computer away to a well-deserving family or household across Central Florida. And we also support other localized nonprofits that are trying to get uh, off the ground or need that technology assistance. And uh, through our interagency partnerships that we've established with 10 other local nonprofits, including the Mustard Seed, Rescue Outreach, Red Suitcase Ministry, the Pregnancy Crisis Center, uh, Esther Single Mothers Outreach, and many more that we're able to directly focus resources to clients that are already in need, clients that are already vetted, and in addition to walk-in support that we're already getting at Christian Tech Center, that we're already getting walk-ins by homeless individuals that just need that assistance. I mean, one of our very first walk-ins was a homeless individual off the street, and from that he was able to reconnect to his family, start producing his own Christian rap songs, and uh, to my understanding that he's in the process of applying for employment. And so this is an example of major quality of life impacts that Christian Tech Center is able to make just by providing an essential piece of utilitarian equipment. 
And uh, of course, um, our environment's open to everyone. We have a standard retail facility that's uh, at the corner 434 and range line. Um, and uh, we do also fix computers for the general public on a donation supported basis. And we have a, a complimentary coffee bar with a Keurig machine. We have a TV that's playing worship music all the time. We have a free Bible bookshelf that we give away free Bibles because we believe that no one should ever have to feel like they have to be separated from the word of God because of some sort of economic circumstance. And the best thing that we can do, of course, anytime anyone has a need for prayer, that uh, I can come agreement with them for prayer. And uh, even, uh, I mean, we've even had people come in who are reached with Christian Tech Center who ended up giving their lives to Jesus. And let me tell you something, finding Christ and accepting him as Lord and Savior is probably the best decision you can ever make if you have never had a relationship with God in your life, or you've never known what it's like. Like it's it's more real than you can ever imagine. And even though I lost the election, I found victory in Christ. And that is and living for Jesus is what guides me in each and everything I do. I also serve on the tech team here at Lake Mary Church uh, after this meeting. Um, I'm going to be serving on the camera team, uh, helping with uh, doing some video production. I also I I'm also putting together a prayer movement called Pray for Our Leaders. We're in our fifth year, and this year Christian Tech Center is going to be the primary organizer, where we invite government leaders, we invite candidates, first responders, veterans, to all come and receive prayer. Um, it's truly inspiring to be able to put God back in the center and the forefront of leadership where, where Jesus is exalted in his rightful place and being able to bring joy, uplift the community. And uh, so every computer that we prepare, every computer that we repair is a light in the darkness that we're planning for the kingdom of God in our community. And I truly see this that in 50 something years that we're going to have pop up Christian tech centers all over the place, being able to restore independence, autonomy, balance, connections restored. And I just truly believe that th this is where God wants me. We're making huge impacts. And of course, we're an all inclusive organization. So we help any and all, regardless of your background, regardless of your faith, regardless of how you identify yourself or what have you. We're available to serve any and all in the community. And uh, as I said, we're a full fledged 501c3 at 1006 West State Road 434 in Longwood. And of course, uh, we're always glad to avail ourselves as a reliable technological resource for anybody who needs us. And uh, I'm just so excited to be able to open this next chapter. And uh, of course, I look forward to continuing to work with the Central Park Computer Society to be able to connect these resources to those who might need them as well. So, uh, of course, um, if anyone has any questions, I'm always glad to answer them. I have, my, I have a got question. My, I got my hand up. Uh, Andre, uh, what type of equipment do you accept? And uh, uh, how does one get that to you? Absolutely. So we accept all sorts of computer equipment. So desktop computers and laptop computers. So we prefer 10 years or newer. Um, pretty much the oldest equipment that I would give out to a client would probably be a second gen I series machine or newer. Um, so of course, uh, monitors, keyboards, mice, related accessories like webcam speakers. And of course, to support our operation, we also rely heavily on financial support as well. Um, as a 501c3, of course, any contribution is tax deductible, whether it's a material contribution or a monetary contribution. Uh, so uh, if uh, you can donate either a one-time gift or even join on as our monthly sponsorship team, our monthly partnership team to be able to help support our operation. Uh, so to run Christian Tech Center, um, it costs about $5,000 a month to run. And this is my full-time endeavor. And the way I structured it is, I mean, we pay $1,500 a month for rent, about $500 a month for utilities, internet, insurance, all that good stuff. And then I just pay myself a very minimalist salary based on what I made at Refresh Computers before. And because I'm blessed that I've been able to live 
on a very minimalist lifestyle. And the important thing is, it's not my money, it's God's money. I'm just his instrument of faith to be able to fulfill what he wants me to be able to do in this life. And so I'm glad that I'm not in a position where I have to worry about chasing money because in the end, I know God will provide. And of course, uh, any and all help that's available is greatly appreciated. I have a question, Andre. Sure, Stan. If someone has uh, has means and wants you to diagnose a, a machine, how, how yeah. is uh, you're basing it on donations? But is there a scale that you have in mind? Uh, well, um, we operate on it for the computer repair services. We offer them on a donate where you can afford basis. So it's written in my bylaws that we do not set a fee schedule. So if somebody wants to donate $25 or if they want to donate $500, it's entirely up to them. Um, because in the end, the entire goal of this is that this is a community service organization and everything that we get in goes entirely to supporting our community service programs. In fact, uh, just last week, um, Lake Mary Church did a back to school event, historic Goldsboro at the Westside Community Center. We gave away 17 free laptops amongst 200 families receiving free school supplies. So that's just an example of the huge impacts that we've already been making. And we wanna be able to continue to support families, individuals, um, generations young and old from uh, college students, high school students, even, even children in elementary school, in fact, need computers these days. Um, all the way up to uh, helping senior citizens, socially disadvantaged communities, unemployed, underemployed, I mean, you name it, we exist to serve. Thank you. Andre, uh, yes. I'm, I'm Bill Crow. I, we do similar thing here in Sarasota. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering what kind of vetting process do you have for providing computers to the needy? I'm glad you asked. So with the interagency partners that we have, the 10 nonprofits that we're partnered with, and we're always working on building relationships with more and more as we go, um, that they do a large part of vetting on their end as well. Um, so for example, with Rescue Outreach Mission, if they have a resident that's going out of their shelter into transitional housing and they're gonna need a computer so they can start applying for work, then uh, that all they have to do is reach out to me and like to say, hey, Andre, we have this computer, we've already vetted this client, and then we just set them up with a computer. For others on the general public, it's pretty much a case by case basis. Uh, we're working on also incorporating the standardized, uh, the standard of living forms uh, as well. But pretty much if it's an unemployed individual, if it's someone on food stamps or like pretty much I ask them, what is the details of your situation that you need a computer or for example, and 95% uh, of the time it's a circumstance that we wanna be able to fulfill that need. Um, it's a similar model to a Red Suitcase Ministry. Someone goes to Red Suitcase Ministry with a particular need, and then they aim to try to fulfill that need. And the good thing is that, that even if there's a circumstance where one or two computers end up with somebody that didn't actually need it, the thing is we have so many computers that we get coming in that I recondition. In the end, it's not about the person that if, if so, if we do get taken advantage of it one or two times, I mean, that happens with every organization, even the sharing center, that happens with them, even with rescue outreach, like it happens. But the important thing is the heart behind the need. And uh, of course, we always make sure that like, if it's somebody that I wanna know what's their situation, I'm not just gonna say, say somebody comes in like, oh, here, a free computer. We, we are, we're gonna specifically at least vet as much as we can vet to make sure that the person that's getting them is in need. And we also have a comprehensive CRM that we're able to do continual follow-up or oversight. I mean, our standard of success is for every computer or service we give away and that client is able to achieve an essential standard of living goal, whether they're able to get housing or get a job or graduate from school or they find Jesus. That's our ultimate goal out of the whole project. Super. Thank you. Uh, one other thing for the education part. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have classes you set up or in a place you do that? I guess you do it in your center. Yeah. So uh, right now we're offering one-on-one -on -one assistance for people that come to me. 
We're working on actively developing classes with not with the nonprofits such as Rescue Outreach Mission, Pathways to Care, and then we're also working on trying to set up our own independent uh, workshops as well. So we're anticipating being able to have our own um, our own workshops uh, starting at least at the beginning of 2023. Super. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Good job. Thanks. Thanks for doing it. Thank you. So uh, does anyone else have any questions for me? Tom Hirsch has his hand up. All right, Tom, go ahead. Uh, hi, Henry. Thanks for launching this. Um, uh, over the years, there have been some other organizations that have done this. You may be familiar with the you know, Missionary Computer Fellowship, uh, Gift from God Computers, Main Street Computer Outreach, all of um, all of those uh, organizations, unfortunately, went away, but uh, yeah. a number of them would also accept uh, scrap end of life electronics because, you know, what you'll you'll probably get things, the you know, electronics that don't work, but there's a you can there are electronics recyclers that will pay what four or five, six cents a pound or whatever for old electronics. Do you expect that you will be able to? Uh, accept donations of electronics and, and, and your ministry will be able to sell those to electronics recyclers to raise money? Uh, typically for end of life equipment, what I do is I send that over to A1 Assets. Uh, so A1 Assets used to be the parent company of Refresh Computers before 2020. And A1 Assets uh, has been generous in supplying uh, computer equipment for our internal systems. Um, including my front of house systems, my inventory management system, and uh, keyboards, mice, and monitors, and printers to be able to set up my workstations, including my hard drive cloning and recovery set machines, and laptop carts, and a few other miscellaneous items. So typically what I do with end of life of goods, I take them over to A1 Assets. Um, so that way I know they're being properly handled, properly recycled, and if I need to have if someone brings me equipment that needs to be securely wiped for destruction, that they offer that for me as well. Um, additionally, when I do secure wipes, I also have a licensed copy of Active Rescue Disk. It's the same software that a uh, uh, particular Space Coast defense contractor uses. I was donated licensed copies of that software. So that way I can also do my own secure data wipes with data destruction certificates for organizations that request them as a contingency of the technology donation. All right. So you, uh, you do not want uh, older stuff. Yeah. You know, that, that, is, that is of no benefit to your organization then. Um, at the no. moment, unfortunately not because, but at some point in the future, I really like to be able to find a donation of a commercial truck, like a commercial transit van that I can then use to facilitate equipment transport and also to be able to expand upon my mobile services because there's a limit as to why I can fit the truck in my car. <laughs> right. Um, I see there's some more questions. Well, continuing what Tom was saying, then you don't have an arrangement with um, A1 that if somebody were to bring in, whether it's a, an old. Yeah, so I can bring old stuff to A1 assets. So if it's something that I can't use, I can bring it to A1 assets. You're, you're not receiving anything from them. So there's no monetary benefit to you for that at this point. Correct. Okay, fine. Thank you. Hey, Andre, I was wondering, uh, I used to uh, volunteer at a church, and we ran into an organization called TechSoup.org. Are you familiar with them? Uh, yes, we are registered with TechSoup, although um, through that, we were able to get uh, uh, a 10-seat free license for Microsoft Office 365. But other than that, with TechSoup, um, I was rather surprised and disappointed in terms of the availability and what they do um, because a lot of the things they sell like reconditioned computer equipment or some of the software are actually more expensive to buy through TechSoup than to actually get on my own as a normal subscription. Um, that being said, the Microsoft Office benefit has been most useful. Um, also being able to get the Microsoft server license. So some things are beneficial, but overall, I was a little bit disappointed that TechSoup didn't really have competitive 
uh, competitive uh, offerings as it relates to some of the everyday, like uh, the Adobe Suite, for example. Or, I mean, I was surprised they're charging more for computers. Like they advertise it oh, it's a free computer, but there's an admin fee. I'm like, the admin fee is more than I can just go to refresh computers and buy the computer for yeah. the same one. So, um, to, to each its own when it comes to that. Um, I mean, we definitely want to be able to partner with as many other organizations and companies to be able to sponsor us with technology or funding as possible. Uh, so definitely something to keep in your prayers. And if you have, if you all might have networks with businesses, other organizations, or if you guys, even yourselves might be in, in a position to help support us monetarily, um, even a small partnership like $100 or a few hundred dollars a month can help go a long way. Plus, it would be a qualifying tax, tax benefit disbursement. So uh, um, for people looking for charities to donate with uh, from their retirement accounts or 401ks to avoid the tax penalty, then, of course, uh, that's something that uh, is also an available benefit as well, being a 501c3. Does anyone have any more questions? Well, I'd like to make a few more comments. And sure. uh, obviously, CFCS is a 5013C as well. And that's a big part of why I invited you to come and tell us what you're up to and to see what we can do to help and be a part of that. I really thank you for taking the time to explain everything to us this afternoon. And Absolutely. And I see there's a hand raised. Uh, William, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just a couple of words. We've been we've been doing this here in Sarasota for ten years, and some sources of computers are the school systems mm -hmm. and your local government, city council, city mm -hmm. board. Of, you know, uh, oftentimes has a wealth of computers they're willing to donate to organizations like yeah. yourself. Or you would think, um, unfortunately, I've been hitting a lot of roadblocks as it relates to Seminole County Public Schools. Um, the, the board members really want to be able to support Christian Tech Center. Yeah. And in fact, they, uh, in fact, uh, the candidates for school board also are interested in wanting to support this as well. But trying to get a meeting with like Superintendent Beeman to try to kick something off, it's been like pulling teeth, unfortunately. Um, I was able to connect with the, their community development director. And then they tell me, oh, we don't want to partner with you because we're already doing this. And I'm like, oh, really? Because I respond back courteously, of course. But the thing is, so if they're already doing this, why don't the school board members know about? Why don't the teachers know about? Why don't the parents know about it? And why isn't there anything on it on the website? It's because, no, it does not really exist. But so why? It just doesn't make sense. I'm trying to avail ourselves as a resource to help people. And but one thing for sure is that Seminole State College and Kaiser University have been, uh, we've been working on opening doors with them. Um, and I'm the type of guy, like if anyone wants to partner with us and support us, I love the opportunity. Like if Seminole Schools wants to partner with us, I really want that, especially since they have a foundation dedicated to helping get resources to kids in need. We yep. want to get technology resources to kids and families in need. So it's, it's just some of the pushback that I've gotten it does feel like a gut punch, if you will, because I'm always about working together, opening doors for the benefit of our community. That's what this is all about. And so when there's people that would just want to, whether it's out of spite or whether out of selfishness, that would want to deprive people in need from being able to receive these critical resources, it just boggles my mind. But I mean, I'm blessed that, uh, for example, like I said, Lynx is donating us five laptops this year, um, the bus system. Um, then also uh, the city of Longwood is working on getting us some of their surplus equipment as well. And uh, I'm blessed to have such great relationships in, with some of our civic leaders in the community. And that's from this election experience, that's where I believe how God wanted to use this, not only to bring me to know Jesus, but to be able to build that trust and rapport in the community, to be able to build these relationships with our local government leaders. And that's how we've already been able to open some of these doors. 
uh, Andre, if you're interested never in Sarasota, mm -hmm. um, look us up. Mm -hmm. It's called the Sarasota Technology Users Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, visit us in the shop. We have a sizable shop that we use to refurbish our computers. And probably yeah. five or six people involved there. On, and so if you're ever in the Sarasota area, please stop by and we can share more stories yeah. and ideas. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to Sarasota, but I definitely would be interested in, in uh, accepting that invitation. Yeah, I and could. Okay. So if you email me your information, of course, my email address is andre at christiantechcenter.com. Okay. And then, uh, of course, on my website, christiantechcenter.com, you can also potentially, uh, for those interested, you can uh, also learn more about our various programs, uh, the different services that we offer, and, of course, ways to support us. We have a donation link on there as well. Uh, we're a PayPal verified charity. We're also a Facebook verified charity. And uh, we also can accept checks in the mail made out to Christian Tech Center Ministries. And of course, uh, you'd have that benefit of being able to claim that tax deduction on your, uh, on your uh, taxes next year. Okay, I'm going to post a phone number on, on the chat room. All right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so does anyone else have any questions for me about Christian Tech Center? All right, then my next question would be, does anyone have anything that they would like me to pray for today? Good question. What was that? Someone said, great question. Yeah. I can't think of anything. I have a question for Bill Crow, though. Bill, Stan Walner here, and did I not put you in touch with some people at the uh, Seniors Now group in Orlando that were disbanding with uh, 10 or 12 all-in-one computers? I think you did. I think you did. I'm not sure what happened with that. I was curious. I never did be hear back from either of you. You you did not ever get that equipment from them? I, uh, Mike Hutchinson, who's the director of the refurb project, may have called and and is it how long ago a year maybe yeah probably i think we did make contact and did get some computers from them. oh okay no, I, I can't guarantee that but i remember some interaction we had with orlando okay well i'm i'm curious about that because i had mentioned them to andre if they were still available here that yeah was my well, give them a call of course. I, I can't reach them anymore. Uh, the, the president <laughs> had passed away suddenly, and uh, th that was part of why they decided to disband, and they were looking for a 5013C to, to donate the equipment to, as they must, for the state laws. So, all right, well, thank you very much. I'll pursue it further. And uh, actually, if you could have Bill, uh, you, you're, you're, maybe it was Mr. Hutchinson. It was, it was, it was. I see. It was Mike Hutchinson. Well, if you could have him contact me, that would I would appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there more questions or anyone else have um, ideas they want to share with uh, Andre? So before I go, I'll go, if I may, I'd like to go ahead and pray over all you guys. Uh, Father, Lord, we thank you for this, for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to get together in friendship and fellowship. Lord, we thank you for this great group of guys from the Central Florida Computer Society all coming together to help people with computers and being able to become a valuable resource for people in the community. Lord, we ask that to any ailments that they might be facing, let the spirit of infirmity be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you continue to give them crisp minds, continue to give them strength to persevere against any challenges and adversities that they might face. Uh, Lord, we ask that you continue to bless their nonprofit and bless all of our nonprofits as we continue to work together for the benefit of our community. Uh, we pray that there continue to be an abundance to be able to serve those in need. I pray for God's provision for this support in any and all assistance that in your will, let it be done. And Lord, we pray that Central Florida Computer Society will continue to persevere 
and be a bedrock resource in our community for years and years to come. In your precious name, I pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, Andre, best of luck to you on your new enterprise, and thank you for taking the time and giving us the information today. Absolutely, we'll and likewise, I thank you greatly for this invitation. Terrific. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Got it. Thank you, and best of luck to your ende endeavor. Uh, I know it's very satisfying. I'm on the board of directors uh, along with Bill Crow in, in the Sarasota group, and uh, I know it's it's a, a big benefit to the community, and I'm sure yours is going to be uh, just yeah. as well received. Absolutely, and I forgot to introduce who my board directors are, so of course, there's me at the top, and then uh, I have uh, Stephen Billings, a retired U.S. Army veteran. He was in the chaplain corps for six years, and now what he does is that all he does is help support nonprofits in the community. Uh, Antonio Reyes leads the IT at uh, Encounter Global Outreach Church in Pine Castle. And then my uh, other board member, Tony Boney, he's the deputy mayor of the city of Longwood, who's also a business owner. And uh, together we're a diverse team with a unique, uh, a unique team of diverse talents all coming together for the benefit of our community and this organization. And uh, God willing that Christian Tech Center is going to be serving for many years, helping many people, being a light in the darkness for Jesus, and of course, being a technological resource that's uh, so badly needed right now. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much, Andre. Thank you. Okay, I do have a few announcements um, regarding other upcoming meetings of the Computer Society. The Linux thing is the first that occurs in the month, and that was last week, so you missed that one for this month. Mike Ungerman is sending those out notices out. I believe the Apple SIG is tomorrow, and again, they are sending out direct notices to those people. The board of directors is this Thursday, the 18th, and I see that Mark Schulman is with us, so I'll ask now, Mark, please do get the minutes out to everyone as soon as you can. Today or tomorrow would be great. And uh, the tech SIG is the fourth Tuesday, that's the 23rd, and uh, that will be on at 7 o'clock uh, normal time, and I'll be announcing that, reminding people of it in the tech SIG uh, email. Uh, Stan, uh, just a re reminder that the tech SIG Google group is uh, a very good group with a lot of questions and answers, but a lot of the announcements for CFCS go out through that group as well. And if you're not a member of it and would like to be, send Stan an email at smwalner at gmail.com, and he'll add you to the list. Thank you very much, Huey. I appreciate that. Anyone else have any announcements or further questions or comments? Of the uh, Stan. Yes. Um, I just got back on. I lost my internet, but I just got it back on. I didn't get to hear the end of Andre's thing. Um, I ran across two new search engines. I don't know where I saw them or what. One of them is Neva, N-E-E-V-A, and the other one is Freespoke. And they both, I believe, are claiming to be about the same way as, as um, DuckDuckGo. Has anybody else run across them? I have not. I have not. Mike, have you? <laughs> no, I, I'm in basically using... Um, Rave's internal search engine now, which, if they need to, will de whatever um, the use of Google search. They can actually submit searches to Google, but not take all the tracking off of it. But they've now claimed that they've built an index, an independent index that's almost as good as what Google does. So I've been using Brave search, but DuckDuckGo is my backup. Okay, somebody might want to give them a try or something. I haven't, but I just I had them written down. So, <clears throat> and that was N E V A N E E V A N W -E, e V A and free spoke S P O K E. All right, I got the free spoke. Please repeat the first one again. Neva N E E V a and e e v e okay thank you 
I'm seeing Neva searches show up on my Google searches too. I'm not really sure how that works. Or just put it in chat. Yeah. You know, type it out in chat. That way we All can. All right. Let me see if I can get down there and do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> been a busy week talking about lightning strikes. I've got someone who had a, a, a lightning strike right very close to their house, similar to you, uh, <clears throat> Forrest, and, and they, they had people at their house, uh, again, several thousand bucks fixing everything, except for the wife's computer. And it turns out the hard drive survived the, 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 the jolt. The rest of the computer is dead. So I've been uh, trying to, you know, locate a good um, external case to put a hard drive in and then be able to attach it uh, to it. I, I got them a used computer to replace it. And uh, it, that's been keeping me busy and, and another couple of other issues. And then my local granddaughter is turning 10 today. I realize many of you have uh, great grandkids that age, but I got sort of a late start. But uh, we're, we're having dinner with with them in uh, just a couple of hours close by and looking forward to that. So I guess at this point, if there's no other uh, comments or questions and, and any other thoughts, uh, we'll call it an afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Don't forget Huey's Deck for Senior tomorrow at uh, at noon if you haven't tried that give it a shot if somebody if anyone doesn't know how to get to it give me a, a, a shoot me an email and i'll uh, give you the, the link to get to it and um also stan i'm doing a uh a, a lunch and learn for uh senior planet which is an aaarp uh, uh organization on wednesday at 1 30 our time eastern time uh, and go to senior, uh, just do a search on senior planet and it's the Colorado group, but I think all the senior planets get invited and it is open to the public. All you have to do is, I, I believe is, uh, you can get the, uh, uh, link from them and, uh, from the website and, uh, or sign up for their newsletter and they'll send it out or, or get in touch with me and I'll get you the link. And I'm doing it on, uh, uh, a learning resources for seniors on Wednesday at 1.30. And one quick comment on lightning strikes. I had an electrician out doing some other work for me about a year ago, and I talked to him about surge suppressors. He said the best thing I could do is to fix my grounding rods, and he put down a much deeper grounding rod and tied it in and checked all the connections. That and lightning rods. Oh. And the best thing really is have a quick, convenient way to unplug everything when you have a severe storm coming around. That is by far the best protection. You can get. This was out of the blue. No warning, no thunder, just a crack, and that was it. The same thing happened to my neighbor one house over. He lost most everything. We just had some surges. I'm just glad I had 100% uh, replacement value insurance. So uh, one thing that uh, my TV was a uh, smart TV, but it was also a 3D TV, which they don't even make anymore. I found one in California that they wanted $2,900 and something for. And I, of course, I've got all the 3D glasses, got 10 cents of them, but I wasn't going to take advantage of them and get that. So I got a lesser one, so they don't even make them anymore, but there was, I found one that was brand new. So. Okay, Stan, thanks. Thank you all for coming. And uh, Huey, appreciate your help. Great uh, Wednesday as usual. See you all next time.